Alright, for this drawing we're going to start by drawing three trees. And first we're going to draw the trunks of the trees so that we can get them evenly spaced out. So I'm going to do two towards the middle of my page, and then I'm going to do my last one a little bit lower and in the corner. And then for the tops of our trees, we're going to do kind of circles, kind of ovals, but it does not have to be perfect. So I'm going to draw my first tree top and then my second one I'm going to have the first one overlap it so I'm going to draw this one like it's behind the first one. Right, and now we're going to work on a horizon line. Horizon line is where the ground meets the sky. So I'm going to start at the side of my page, go behind my tree, continue on the other side of my tree until I get to the other edge of the paper. So this is where the ground meets the sky. All right, so now that we can um, do it in the style of Tan Schulten, we're going to draw some more lines that go across. Um, they're horizontal, they go across. I'm going to have them touch the bottom of my trees so that the trees don't look like they're floating. Now I'm going to make a mark on my horizon line because when I start drawing the lines in the sky, it's hard to remember which one's the horizon line. So the lines in the sky are just like the lines on the bottom of the page. Um, they get, need to go behind the trees. They go from side to side on your page. They can be wavy. They can have some straight parts. And about two will fit in your sky. Right, now we're going to work on some vertical lines so we can break up our space like Tan Schulten does. Um, they can be wavy, they can be straight, they need to start at the horizon line and go down. They need to be separate from the sky. So that's why we needed to mark our, our horizon line. So you start at the horizon line and draw wavy, curvy, straight lines down. Remember they need to go behind the tree, they should not go over the tree. And you can draw about four or five of those. And then you also need to do some in the sky. So start at the horizon line again and this time go up. Remember to go behind your trees. You don't want to go on top of your trees. It needs to go from the horizon line to the top of the page. And about four or five of those too. Or six if you need to. Right, now we're going to divide our trees up into space. I'm just going to draw one vertical line, can be a horizontal one, um, through about the middle of our tree. It can be curvy, it can be straight, so that each tree has two parts. It'll just give more interest to our picture and divide up our space like Tan Shelton does. Alright, now we're going to start coloring. Um, you can just color each space in or you could try something different. Um, one thing you can do is what I'm doing is making a rough outside edge with my marker for my space and then I'm going to fill it in with a crayon. So that will give you an interesting texture. It will make your picture a little more interesting. Um, you can also just color in your spaces completely. That is fine too, but if you wanted to try something else, that would be um, a good thing to do. Alright, so first we're going to color our trees. 
And you should really use greens and browns on this because once you get going on the background, if you don't have your trees green and brown, they really are not going to look like trees anymore. So try to use green for the tops of your trees, browns for the uh, trunks of your trees. Okay, so color your trees first. Our ground not the sky we're gonna do the ground first and I want you to choose about four or five maybe six colors that you want to use in this um, and by colors I mean like orange marker is one color orange crayon is the second color orange color pencil would be a third color um, you want to keep colors that are kind of ground colors um, save blues and purples for your sky um, it's up to you, but you need to make sure that you only use about five or six colors on your ground and then save some colors for the top that you're not going to use in your ground. That way we can tell the difference between your ground and your sky. 
So on my ground, I'm going to be using oranges, yellows, greens. I'm going to be combining them. I'm going to use some markers, some crayons, some colored pencils. So work on coloring your ground. Um, five or six different colors. Save sky colors for your sky.
it's time to start coloring our sky. Blues, purples, reds, pinks maybe. Whatever colors you want, but try not to use the ones that you used in your ground and try not to use green because then your trees are going to disappear. Um, color with techniques you used on the bottom or you can color them all in. It's up to you. Um, just try to use like five or six different colors again on your sky. All right, have fun coloring your sky.
you use the pencil at the beginning, you're going to want to outline all of your different shapes, your different sections with a black marker, a black colored pencil, or a black crayon. That way we'll be able to tell where each of your sections are a little bit better and make your artwork look a little more refined. So if you want to do that now, I'm doing mine, even though I already had mine in black, I'm doing them thicker now so that you can see the difference in how um, the different shapes stand out. So go, go ahead and outline your project and then you'll be done. Thank you.